Welcome to the busy Latter-day Saint, where righteous desires and living life come together. Here, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints discuss their challenges and successes in studying the scriptures. I'm your host, Richard Bernard. The music for this program is by Marvin Goldstein and used with his permission. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I encourage you to leave a comment regarding this episode or the podcast in general. To leave a comment, go to lovethepodcast.com forward slash B as in boy LDS, or you can click on the link in the show notes. Serge Mayer joins us today and talks about how he managed his time as he attended university full-time, along with a full-time job, and being a father and a husband to a growing family that includes a child with special needs. Currently serving as a bishop, he shares how he draws spiritual strength from the scriptures and how, with his wife Sarah, they turn to the Lord for counsel. Now, here's Serge. Serge, welcome this afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having Good. me on. Thank you. I'm glad you could do this at such a short notice. Now, uh, we need to know a little bit about you. And for full disclosure to the audience, uh, you are our son. And um, so I obviously know quite a bit about you, but we need to let the audience know also. So you're um, uh, serving currently as a bishop. How much longer have you got in that? That's the good question. I know how long I've been, and I don't know how much longer it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long has it been? Uh, it's been five years and maybe three months. Yeah, and about three months. And how many days and minutes? I'm not there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, among that, uh, of course, you've got some children. Would you like to tell us about them? Yeah, I have five children. Um, my oldest is 15 and a half, and my youngest is five, and uh, several in between. <laughs> and how many boys and how many girls? Uh, four boys, one girl, the girl's right in the middle. Yes, and you have one child who has special needs. Tell us about him. I do, yeah. His name's Landon. He's... Um, 14. He's the second child. Uh, he was born with a heart defect. Um, we didn't know that he had the heart defect until about 24 hours after he was born. And um, he had um, internal bleeding all over the place, um, some in his brain. Um, and this was all, you know, within the first week of, of being born, and part of that caused cerebral palsy. Um, and uh, so he he's in a wheelchair. Um, he's he's got some limitations, definitely, um, but he's he's a great joy to be around. Everybody loves him, and he's he's always very happy and positive. Yes, I I would agree, and I love the. Um the thing that you made at the to go off the back of your uh, van uh, mm -hmm. that, that holds the uh, the chair for him and uh, it says heaven sent yeah uh, it looks all, like a, looks like a radial flyer wagon and then the heaven sent looks pretty similar to that little design yes, for yeah I think radial that's, flyer I think that's great now when that happened you were a student correct uh, yeah I was. Uh, let's see, I was in my second year of uh, at the university. Um, we had our first child uh, my first during my first class of university. I transferred from a junior college, and um, he was born right at the beginning of the summer. I think I think I may have taken my last final and then he was born. and then by the time we brought him home, it was like the day or two before the next. A uh, quarter started, so it was over a summer. And you were working also. You had a job. Yeah, yeah, I was working full-time, 30 hours, um, having to commute to that job and then working, or and then going to, uh, to university. Well, I've always admired you for being able to do all that. And um, as life went and you had more children, um, you 
gradually uh, graduated. And what did you get your degree in? This is in architecture. Okay, and so being an architect, you needed to do some intern. Is that what they call it? Internship. Internship. Yeah. yeah. I. Uh, mm-hmm. And ha- and ha- that was a lot of hours. I can't remember how many how many hours is that. Uh, it it ended up being about two years worth of full time work in hours. So here you were, uh, a growing family. Um, you got Landon, and mm-hmm. um, you actually were at a time working two jobs. You were doing your internship and then doing your your regular job. And that internship required quite a drive, if I remember correct. It was in Orange County. Uh, yeah, it was. I I. Um... It was probably about an hour drive to get to it. Now, after a while, I I learned enough from the architect and and his way of doing things that I was able to work some of those days just from home and not have to uh, to go and do the work at home. So, mm-hmm. uh, after a while, it got a little easier as far as the commute. And with all of this, you were then called as a bishop. Uh, I was, yeah, yeah. I was called after that internship started. Well, somewhere in the middle. My question for you is, how did you handle all of this? You know, th- there's a lot of people um, that would <laughs> they they would just uh, they, they would handle it, but uh, you've handled it so well. You and your wife Sarah have handled this so well, and just wh- where do you get the strength to do it? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I look back back on it now and, and wonder how I did it myself, <laughs> you know, working so much and and uh, and studying so much. You know, the program I went through was not a, a, a walk in the park at the university. It was very, um, very intensive, lots of projects and and studying. Um, I remember when I when I uh, I went to the um the first couple of classes, the uh, the dean got up and said, "We want you to work. We want you to gain experience. But if you work more than than I can't remember what the number was, like fifteen hours a week or something like that, you're going to flunk out of the program. Don't try to do it." And uh, and I just said, "Hey, that's not an option. Uh, I've got a family that I have to to support." And so all the way through, I worked at least thirty hours a week. Um, and, uh, everything went well, graduated almost at the very top of my class, not quite there, but, uh, um, did really well in college. And what do you account for that? Um, well, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things that, that, uh, you know, helped me to get through it and to get through it well. Um, one was I was married and I have a great wife. She's very, very supportive. I, I remember, you know, times where, where I'm at school working, you know, with my partners on jo- on projects and things and, and she shows up and brings me my dinner and takes off or shows up and I'm able to see the kids for a little bit. And, um, you know, I had, I, I did have less things to worry about than, uh, many of my, um, schoolmates um i was able to focus on on uh, just the school and not worrying about having to you know do my own laundry and things like that so she was a a good help um you know i i found over the years that when you when you serve the lord he he makes up for it and allows you to do um do great things and accomplish great things um you know, you 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 rely on the blessings of of God when you when you serve Him and you're doing what you need to be doing. Um, you know, one thing that I, I can't remember where in this in this process or at what time in this process it was, but we we had a state conference and and uh, President Nelson Russell M. Nelson came down and this wasn't while he was the prophet, but we were in a um, a priesthood leadership session and uh and part of the session was he just he he asked if anyone had any questions and there was a guy that asked a question that was you know how do you balance 
um, work and school and family and and all these things that we and a, and a church calling. Um, how do you balance all of this properly? And um, and you know, as as somebody asked the question, you know, I in my mind I thought, well, everybody knows the answer to that. You just kind of put your head down and just keep going and whatever. But um, you know, his answer, I don't think I'll ever forget. He he said, if you look at each of those things as a blessing in your life, then you're just going from blessing to blessing to blessing, and and everything's going to work out, and you find that joy that you're looking for. You know, if they if any of them become a burden, or you look at them as a burden, then it becomes rough. But, uh, you know, to have a family to spend time with, to have a job to go to work, work at, to, um, to have a calling that, um, that fits you well and that you're willing to do, you know, all of these things are blessings. And so, um, you know, to go from blessing to blessing is a great thing. Wow, that's a, a, a great statement. Going back to you, Sarah, I didn't know she brought meals to you. And I was thinking that wasn't just her in the car. <laughs> uh, she, no, had, she, she had to pack the kids, too. <laughs> she had little ones. And even a lot of my uh, schoolmates got to know her well because she'd bring them food, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that is something. Well, you now have your own business. I do. Yeah. And, how, and how's that going? It's going really well. I, uh, uh, so I, I worked as a civil engineer, uh, under a civil engineer for many years, maybe 18 or so, uh, all the way through my architecture um, school, all the way through my internships for architecture. I had a really good job with uh, uh, an engineer. And, um, you know, as, as I was able to, to cross off you know, one requirement and the next requirement and, and get towards getting licensed. I was able to get licensed as an architect while working um, full-time as a civil engineer and part-time for, for an architect to get all my experience. Um, I, uh, we finally got to a point where I, I had done everything that I felt like I needed to do, that I've been prompted to do. I'm an architect. I have my own business, side business, you know, that I've been working for years and and eventually, we got to the point where where um, we were asking ourselves, "Well, now what's the next step?" And sometimes that's a hard to sit, a hard hard question to ask uh, God. And uh, and through through fasting and prayer, we've we we got to the point where we felt like that the Lord was really really ready to bless us when we were ready to make that that step to working full time on our own. And so we, um, we prayed about it and really felt like, Hey, you know, why not? Or why, why keep waiting? So we decided to make the jump. Um, I quit my, my other job and, uh, started working full time on our own. Um, it just so happens that I quit, quit my job about a month before COVID hit and um and we've never looked back it's all been great um clients have been there you know my they i i'm not sure we would have made that jump if it would have been a month later and covid was there and you know you just worry about you know now's not the time to make the jump but it was a good thing we made that jump when we did otherwise we probably never would have or have, wouldn't have yet well I know there's people listening. Um, uh, it's difficult to go off on your own. I was in, I had my own business for, uh, I was going to say 25 years, but the last five years I was actually working for companies as a consultant. But so I'll say about 18 years. And uh, it's, it's scary. And it's not only that, but you had Landon. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that means uh, insurance and things like that, and mm -hmm. so um, it's it, it's very scary to be able to make that that kind of move. But it sounds like that you weren't so many 
it wasn't a scary moment for you, maybe a concern to, might be a better word, but uh, because of the fasting and prayer, you just felt it was the right time, and so you moved forward. Well, <clears throat> amongst all of this, um, what what is your schedule now? Like I said, as a bishop, and um, you're you got your own business to take care of. You got a family, and everything. When do you find time to get to the scriptures? Well, I I find that if I don't fit it in first thing, I'm not going to get to it. Uh, you know, if I wait for that free time during the day, it's never there. You know, there's always more in the day that that needs to be done. And so it just comes down to choosing what you're going to do. And you make sure to get those things in first. And so do you, do you get up earlier before anybody else or what, how do you do this? Um, lately, I, you know, basically since COVID has, has started, things have changed there a little bit, but, um, I, uh, I have been getting up early, um, before the kids and um, I'll I'll read, study, come follow me is what I'm basically uh, focusing on. Uh, I'll I'll get up and go through come follow me uh, in the morning uh, before uh, my wife and I usually go out on a walk before the kids get up. Wow. Well, what time is this? Um. Let's see. I'll get up about six, sometime between six fifteen, six thirty. Okay, and so you study, and then you go on a walk. Study, go on a walk. We uh, we go around our block. Um, we try to do about two miles a day, just walking, my wife and I. And so we, it's a good time to just talk and and discuss things and counsel about things while the kids are still in bed. And what time do the kids normally wake up? That's a good question. I'm usually gone by the time they get. Oh, up. okay. <laughs> uh, our our teenager is up by the he he usually gets himself up while we're on our walk, and then he'll be in doing seminary. His seminary starts at six thirty, um, oh. and then goes till seven thirty. Yeah. That's... So when we when we come back in, he's usually at the computer doing seminary, but yeah. the others are still in bed. Yeah, that's right. You're in California. You have uh, early morning seminary. Yeah. So yeah. now I I don't know. Is Hayden driving? He is. He got his license or his his permit. Now that's so scary. Driving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's good. He's a uh, he's a very responsible kid. Um, some points can be scary. Sometimes you got to grab the wheel. And uh, say no. This is how far over I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's he's good. Yeah. So he's able to drive himself to early morning seminary. No, no. So right now, early morning seminary is still uh, oh. remotely. At okay. Home yeah, I forgot. On the computer. Yeah, I forgot. We, um, I forgot we had COVID. They do go. They do go on Fridays, and so on Fridays we uh, either my wife or or I will drive him up there. Now, when you're studying the scriptures, what mode do you use? Are you are you using hard copies? Are you using uh, digital? Are you t keeping a journal? Mm -hmm. what, what exactly are you doing? What, what is your workflow when you're studying the scriptures? Mm -hmm. So on a on a regular basis, I I just get up early, I get dressed, and then I'll I'll op open my phone to come follow me, and. Uh, I'll just start going through the the lessons and the the topics for that um, that week. You know, a lot of times I'll get through the the topics and the kind of prepared words and things faster than than the week, and then I'll just go in and keep keep reading some of those scriptures a little bit more. Um, that that's kind of my daily daily schedule. Um, within the last several months, I've I've started a different, different, um, a little, little different study regimen, I guess you could say. I, um, I've been real interested in, in learning about the, all the miracles that Jesus performed when he would, when he was lived his mortal ministry, and so I, um, 
I I just did a, a quick internet search of, you know, miracles of Jesus, and it brought them all up in a list of chronological order and the scriptures that were, um, that, you know, go over that miracle. And, uh, and so I've just kind of started at the top, and I'd read it several times, the miracle, and and uh, and then I've just been taking notes as as to you know the the conditions around the miracle, um, you know mainly looking at faith, you know where how does faith um, apply to this miracle that happened? Sometimes it was the individual, sometimes it was the individual's family, um, you know the person that that had the faith for this miracle to happen. Um, but I've been been taking notes on the computer. Um, about, you know, what is there to learn from these different miracles that happen? You know, we, it, I know that miracles happen today. And, uh, you know, what are the principles that we need to learn about miracles happening? That's a wonderful topic. Really, mm-hmm. it is. Now, um, some some of those miracles are recorded in all four of the uh, Gospels. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you compared how it's recorded uh, in Matthew as opposed in Luke? Yeah, yeah. So at least in this, uh, you know, just this kind of uh, list that I downloaded from the Internet, I don't, I don't even know who prepared it or, or what, but it's just a good starting point. Um, it, you know, it'll it'll list the miracle and then it'll go, you know, in Mark it says this and in Matthew it says this. Okay. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll read one out of one of the Gospels and realize, well, that doesn't sound exactly how I remember it. And then I'll read another one, and oh yeah, that one sounds more familiar. You know, they, they each wrote them a little bit differently, um, and some added more than others. Um, so I, I do like to read them from several spots uh, to get uh, get the big, the best picture of 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 what happened. Is there one that stands out in your mind where you saw a, a kind of a big difference between the the, the authors? Um, there was one, one this last week I was looking at, it was, it was the, um, uh, when Jesus Christ healed or, uh, raised the daughter of Jairus from, from, from death, raised her from the dead. And, uh, there was a, just in there, how it described the differences between, you know, so, so as as Jesus was on the way to to Jairus' house, um, that's where he met the woman who had an issue of blood, and that was another miracle. But then he gets to the house, and there's a group of people there, and um, and the the difference between the 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 recordings of it that I noticed there there was that you know how it describes how he how he basically sent people home that didn't have faith. Um, you know, the, he got there and he said, well, uh, he, um, he asked what's going on and they said, well, she's dead. And he says, well, no, she's not dead. He sleepeth. And they, they laughed at him. And basically he, he sent them, sent those, those people away that didn't have that faith. And, uh, it, it was just written a little bit different in the different, uh, different recordings of it. Well, now, you've been serving as a bishop, um, just to move from the scriptures just for a second. How has serving as a bishop changed you as far as spiritually and drawing you closer to the Savior? Mm-hmm. Hmm. How, is, how has serving as a bishop changed me? Well, um I, I'm I'm silent because I don't know quite where to start. It has changed me a ton. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things, one of the ways that it's changed me is, you know, before before serving as a bishop, you know, you kind of go along with your life and you worry about yourself and your family and your own problems. And uh, once you serve as a bishop, you start, becoming familiar with everyone else's problems. And uh, so you you become a little more like the Savior because you learn to, to help and serve people, other people, uh, to help them get through their problems. 
Um, you know, people don't generally share their problems with everybody unless there's somebody that they need help help with their problems. And so that's that's one of the ways that it's changed me is to really, um, you know, look beyond myself and to help people through their trials. Um, so that's one. Um, hmm. You know, as you, as a bishop, you're given a responsibility to, to, um, to help people the way that the Savior would help them. And sometimes this is helping people to repent of, of mistakes that they've had uh, or that they've made. And, um, you know, it's not me that's, that's helping them to, re- or that's, that's eventually going to let them know if they've repented of this thing, it's the Savior. And so I'm, I'm helping them to know what they need to do um, in order to get past this thing. And um, so the more that you, in a way, represent the Savior in that, in that uh, repentance process, the more you learn about the Savior and become like, like Him. And so one of the things that, that I've learned about the Savior through this whole process is just how merciful He is. You know, He has paid for our sins so that we don't have to suffer from them. He's, he's taken that suffering upon Him. Um, but he does ask us to to change and to repent. Um, so, you know, I, I used to look at repentance as well. You've got to you've got to really suffer for your sins and, through repentance, but that's not always the case. You know, there is some amount of of change that needs to happen. But um, he he's just so merciful to to those that want to repent. Um, sometimes it's, it's a very quick process. Sometimes it's, it's drawn out, but, but he, he's always there to, to extend forgiveness for those that are willing to do what it takes to change. Well, I think those are two, uh, great results of, uh, serving as a bishop. Well, uh, we're getting close to ending here and, um, I don't think you've ever heard these podcasts, have you? Uh, I listened to one that you you'd sent me just as an example of what they're they're oh, like. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Well, as you know, I end with you sharing your testimony. So, would you mind doing that? Okay. Sure. Um, I uh, I was conducting today, and so I shared my testimony uh, at the beginning of our testimony meeting. But I'm I uh, the testimony I shared today was. Um, Mainly, well, I do have a testimony of the Savior, Jesus Christ, as uh, him as our, you know, it's only through him that we can be forgiven of our sins. Um, I know that he's the Son of God. I know that he wants us to be happy, that he loves us. Um, I know that we are children of God. Um, I know that we have a prophet on the earth that uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored uh, through the prophet Joseph Smith, that the scriptures are, are the word of God, that we can find peace and joy through our trials as we, as we study the scriptures regularly. Um, I, I know the days when I forget to read the scriptures because I can feel it. I can feel the, the difference of not having those blessings and the, the Holy Ghost in my life as strong as as I could be if I was reading the scriptures regularly. Um, I, I have a strong testimony of faith, um, that through faith, anything's possible. Um, our faith is, is, is always, always growing or it's, it's diminishing. We always need to be feeding it through reading the scriptures. Um, otherwise it's, it's it's going to be diminishing just because of the world in which we live and all the things that we face around us. Um, and I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.